Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be going over Adobe's Dynamic Link. I know what you're thinking. We're not just going over the basics. We're going to be going over some applications that you might not have actually known about to get the most out of your video projects. <laughs> So most of you probably know what dynamic linking is, but for those of you who don't, here's a quick 10 second explanation. It's basically the system that Adobe came up with so that multiple different programs could interact with the same clip or set of clips and recognize what each of the other programs was actually doing to it. The classic example is having a clip or set of clips in Premiere Pro, sending them over to After Effects, working on them there, and then having all of those results show up in your Premiere Pro timeline. It's pretty cool. But what a lot of people forget is that you can actually use that system with Adobe Audition. I I know, everybody forgets about Adobe Audition. We're gonna be covering all that and more, but let's not waste any more time and jump right into Premiere Pro. Okay, so here we are in Premiere Pro, and right off the bat, let's start with linking Premiere Pro and After Effects. And we're gonna go over three different ways that you can use to initiate this process. The first is probably the most common way that people use this. Taking a part of your Premiere Pro project by highlighting it, right-clicking it, and selecting Replace with After Effects Composition. And bada bing, bada boom, you've got an After Effects composition that opens up for you to be able to work with. It'll ask you to name your After Effects project file, and once you've done that, that's really it. That's really how easy it is to link these. Now, whatever you do here is gonna show up as a recognizable change in Premiere Pro. So let's take this and make a noticeable change to it. And then let's go back to Premiere Pro to take a look. And you can see that it takes just a second, but Premiere recognizes and plays back our footage with the changes from After Effects. Great. Now, here's something else. It doesn't just apply to an individual clip. You can do this for multiple clips at the same time, or nested sequences with multiple clips inside of them. I'm just gonna quickly nest this set of clips here as an example. If we send this nested sequence over to After Effects in the same way, you can see that not only do we get the nested sequence, but we also have access to the other files that are present within that nested sequence as a sub-composition within After Effects. Cool. But here's another great thing. We didn't have to close After Effects or open a new project in order to work with another piece from our Premiere Pro timeline. That first clip we sent over is just in a different tab here as a different composition within the same After Effects project, which is awesome so much less headache. If you had multiple different shots that you needed to work on at the same time, this makes that process so much simpler. But there is one piece of advice that I would give when sending over clips from Premiere to After Effects. What you might notice here is that our After Effects linked file replaces our original piece of footage. So if we wanted to go back to what we had originally, we kind of can't. I mean, we can undo our changes until we get back to the original, but that can break the dynamic link between these programs for this file, making seeing just a quick before and after pretty difficult. So what I would suggest is to hold Alt or Option and click and drag this clip or set of clips directly above the originals as duplicates before you actually send them to After Effects. And then with all of them still highlighted, just right click and uncheck Enable. That way they're still there, but they're deactivated. And if you want to check out what you began with, or just keep them aside as a failsafe, then simply re-enabling them will get you back to square one. Okay, the next way that you can link these two programs is by literally starting in After Effects. Say, with something like this. And then literally just drag and drop the After Effects project file into Premiere Pro. It'll ask you what specific sequence you want to use, and if you've got a main sequence with multiple pre-comps inside of it, Selecting that topmost sequence will ensure that you're getting the final result to all your hard work. This does mean that organization will help you a long ways in this process. Now, with this file linked, you can place it down on your timeline, and you've essentially got exactly the same thing as we had before. The only difference is that you started in After Effects and ended in Premiere Pro, rather than a round trip from Premiere to After Effects back to Premiere. Finally, the last one we don't think you'll end up using that often and wouldn't recommend unless you know your edit is complete, but you can actually import a Premiere Pro project into After Effects. By doing this, you'll be asked again to select a sequence from Premiere that you wanna drag into After Effects. And from there, it'll show up in After Effects as a single unit, 
So this is why we would suggest avoiding this unless you're absolutely positive that your edit in Premiere Pro is complete and you just want to add some little tweaks to the overall unit as a whole. Now on to Audition. Here's the thing, we've said this before that one of the easiest ways to enhance your video projects is with better audio. But when people think about dynamic linking to Audition, they might be like, yeah, yeah, replace a file, edit it in Audition, move to the next one, but I've got loads of audio files and that would take forever. But here's the thing, did you know that with dynamic linking you can edit your entire sequence in Adobe Audition? Let me show you how to do that. Go to Edit, Edit in Adobe Audition, Sequence, Send Video Through Dynamic Link, and then Make sure you keep pan and volume information so that if you made changes to the audio, like a fade in or a fade out for example, Audition will actually notice this and display it properly. So now we can see that we have all of our audio from that sequence inside of Audition in the track orders that we originally set up. And here's the cool thing, when you do this this way, you can actually get a window here where you see the corresponding video previews so that you can see how your audio is actually lining up with your video. And if during this process you make changes in Premiere Pro, it'll actually show these changes in real time in Audition without rendering. And once you get comfortable working in Adobe Audition, you'll probably end up feeling like you have a superpower. Now to actually finish up inside of Audition, unfortunately it's not quite the same as After Effects. You'll need to export your audio back into Premiere, but thankfully it's really simple. Once you've saved, always save your work by the way, go up to multi-channel, export to Adobe Premiere Pro. Then you can select whether you want to export as stems, keeping each track as an individual unit, or as a mix down session, which will turn all of these into one single audio unit to be moved around within Premiere Pro. Now once you do this, you can see that in Premiere Pro, it'll be placed below your original audio, but all of the timing will be correct and ready to play back. A simple solution would be just to mute all of the original audio tracks. Or if you choose a mix down session, simply soloing this layer. And your work has all of the changes that you've made to make it sound absolutely amazing. Now one last thing, if you're having trouble with dynamic linking as a whole in any way, if it's giving you stability problems or crashing for some reason, one of the things we'd suggest is to either update all of your software to the most current version. Or, at the very least, try and make sure that your After Effects, Premiere Pro, and Audition versions are from relatively similar releases. One of the most effective ways to ensure that you're not getting problems is to make sure that your programs are communicating effectively together. And the chances of problems occurring goes up the farther apart each of their different versions are. But guys, that's just been an overview of dynamic linking and some helpful tips to hopefully help you get the most out of it for your video projects. If you guys like this video, consider liking it subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and checking out all of the other awesome stuff we have here at MotionArray.com. Thanks for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.